So, I was using my Ender 3 V2 for a few weeks, and the fan noise was quite annoying, especially at night. I needed a way to automatically shut down the printer after a print, or remotely turn on the printer and start a print, instead of keeping the printer on with that loud fan running all day. I already had a Raspberry Pi here, with Octoprint installed, so I just needed to add a relay module to the main power line and set up the PSU control plugin in Octoprint. I've also bought a 24 volt LED strip earlier and I decided it was a good chance to hook it up while opening up the power supply unit of my Ender 3 V2. So this is the wiring for the relay module this is actually a relay shield for a Wemos D1 Mini from an earlier project. And since it requires a 5 volt signal, I assumed it would work just fine with my Raspberry Pi. In my Raspberry Pi, uh, pins 4 and 6 were already being used by a cooling fan. So instead, I used pins number 2. 14 and 16 for my project and pin 16 is labeled as GPIO number 23 you need to remember this number for later when setting up the PSU plugin for Octoprint I used red wire for 5 volt power black for ground and green for signal and on the relay module, you can choose from two types of connections. The first is normally open, and the second is normally closed. Normally open means that normally open means that the connection is normally broken, and when the relay module gets a signal input into the D1 pin, then it gets connected. Normally closed works the other way. The circuit is normally connected. You can see that the symbol here is connected and this one is disconnected. And when the relay module receives a signal, then the circuit gets broken. In my case, I chose normally closed from the 220 volt power to the printer PSU so this means the printer is basically turned on and when the Raspberry Pi actively sends a signal to the D1 pin then the power gets cut off this way even if I have a problem some kind of problem with my Raspberry Pi I can use the power switch there's a power switch in the back of the printer. I can use that power switch to turn on and off the printer. I know that some people like to connect it like this to the normally open mode. In this case uh, you have to have a constant signal sent to the D1 pin from the Raspberry Pi in order to keep the printer on. This could be some kind of inconvenience, like say you have some kind of problem on your Raspberry Pi, then you can't turn on your printer. But at the same time, this kind of works like a safety measure. So both modes work just fine, and you can always switch from one mode to another by just simply changing the connection from this to this. And in my case, I chose normally closed. So you can just make your choice. So this is how the Wemos D1 Mini Relay Shield looks like. So I soldered uh, three wires to 5 volt power, ground, and D1. And then I just wrapped, it, wrapped up the three wires with a heat shrink tube for extra protection.
and after soldering I applied some hot glue to the joint between the wires and pins because I didn't want the connection to fail too soon. I didn't really want to get into trouble and open up the PSU. And if you have a look at the bottom part, uh, the end of the pins are quite sharp. So I was worried they could short out with the metal casing of the PSU. So I used some pliers and cut off the sharp ends. This is inside the power casing of the Ender 3 V2. I've cut the middle of the red wire which is connecting between the main power switch and the power supply unit and I used a stripper to strip each end. Sixteen gauge worked well with me. Then I twisted each end inserted the ends into the sockets of the relay module and used a screwdriver to tighten the sockets. Always check if you have tight connection. At this point I was unhappy about the wire orientation since I wanted the relay module to be behind of everything so I unscrewed the wire which was connected to the common socket and screwed it back in. Next, I wrapped up the relay module with electrical tape. I tried to make sure nothing would short with the metal casing. That's me adding another layer of tape just in case. Inside the power casing there is plenty of room to snuck in a relay module so I didn't need to print an extra external case for the relay module. So that's the location I was planning. The next step was to add wires to power the 24 volt LED strip. I stripped the ends of a red and black wire. I didn't have a Y-shaped connector so I just twisted the ends and directly inserted them into the V plus and V minus sockets of the PSU. Red to V plus and black to V minus. It was my first time to open the power case so I was just checking if everything was tightened up properly. And it was time to close up the power casing. There are some openings to the opposite side of the main power switch where the wires to the stepper motor come out so I let the extra wires to go through that space.
time to check if the LED works. After stripping the ends of the two wires which are connected to the power supply unit 24 volt output, I made a temporary connection with clear tape. switch on and it works. In order to make it possible to switch the LED on and off, I added a small rocker switch between the red wires and simply spliced between the two black wires with a solder connecting tube. These solder connecting heat shrink tubes make wire splicing very easy. I love these tubes. After connecting the switch, I measured the length of the LED strip. I wanted the LED strip to go up, across, and down the V slots of the two vertical and one horizontal bars. There are markings on the LED strip where to cut so I used wire cutters to cut across that line. The LED strip can fit inside the V-slots of the aluminum bars, so initially I was thinking about sliding the LED strip into all of the V-slots of the three bars. But then I realized that it was very tricky to take the top horizontal bar on and off if you make the LED strip go into all three V-slots. So, I decided to print a V-slot filler for the top horizontal bar and use the sticky tape on the LED strip to stick it on the top part while sliding the strip into the vertical slots. So, this is me hassling with the LED strip. I downloaded and edited a V-slot filler to a length of 245 millimeters that fits the slot of the horizontal bar. I'll put a link to the STL file in the descriptions. The Thingiverse number is 4612901. Next, I moved on to connecting the relay module to the Raspberry Pi. I had some female to female DuPont connectors, so I cut three of them, stripped all the ends, and spliced each of the red, black, and green wires using the solder connector tube. In case you're interested, I'll put the link to the solder connecting tubes in the descriptions. Now Time to connect the wires to the Raspberry Pi's pins. Pass the wires through the opening of the Raspberry Pi case. Now red is for 5 volt power, pin number 2. Black is for ground, pin number 14. It's the 7th from the top. Green is for signal, pin number 16.
Now, connect everything and it's time to set up the PSU control module in Octoprint. Now this is the Octoprint screen. On the top bar, you can find the wrench icon. This is settings. And on the left side, you can find plugin manager. Click on that. And in case this is your first install, then go to get more and search for PSU. In my case, I already have the PSU control plugin installed, so it doesn't show up, but it should show up right here. And then click on install. In my case, I already have it installed. PSU control. Yeah, here it is. And after you install the plugin, you should probably get a new option here. PSU control. And these are my settings. So the GPIO mode should be set to BCM. Switching method, GPIO pin. And the pin number is 23 in my case. If you've connected it to a different pin, then you should yeah, just change the number here. And in my case, I am using the normally closed mode. So I should check invert. If you're using normally open, then leave this unchecked. And the other things really don't matter. And yeah, you should set up the power off options. Automatically turn PSU off when idle. I think this is a very useful feature. If the printer has finished the print and the temperature has dropped under 50 degrees Celsius and it has been idled for more than 15 minutes, then it should automatically turn off. Very convenient and energy saving. Now, time to test it. If you've installed the PSU control plugin properly, then you should get this power icon next to the wrench icon. It says toggle PSU. So let's try it. And it's on. Click it again. Proceed. And now it's off. So, this is how I upgraded my Ender 3 V2. Now, after a print is done, the printer will automatically turn off after finishing the print. And I like how the printer has a light source of its own, so I don't have to turn on a lamp to check the progress of my print at night. How do you like my upgrade? Do you have any advices or tips to share? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and happy printing!